Hi there, it's Jeff here. In this short revision video, let's take a look at the key distinction between poverty and inequality. Well, poverty uh, refers to the absolute or the relative lack of scarce economic resources necessary to sustain a basic standard of living. And we typically measure it by income levels, uh, but also access to basic needs, uh, affordable food, health care and shelter and essential living conditions. So common measures include absolute poverty or extreme poverty, where we fix an income threshold. And the World Bank typically has, uh, well, they have now several extreme poverty lines. The current one uh, for low-income countries is the percentage of people living on less than $2.15 a day adjusted for purchasing power parity. But we also think about relative poverty. And relative poverty is defined in relation to the median income within a society. And typically... The relative poverty line in, in the UK, for example, and the European Union is uh, households adjusted for household size, earning less than 60 percent of the median income. If they earn less than that, they fall below the relative poverty line. This chart uh, takes the 2022 data published by the, the World Bank, and it shows the countries with the highest share of the population living on less than two dollars. 15 a day, and that's adjusted for PPP. And you'll see in the, on the left-hand side there that some of the data we have is, is a little bit out of date, but this is the latest published data. So for the world, 9% of the global population live on less than $2.15 a day. Uh, that's incredibly high in countries like the DRC, in Mozambique, and Malawi, above 70%. That data actually preceded the pandemic in 2020, so in fact the figures could be worse than that. But all of these countries have a level of extreme poverty of above 36%. There have been, though, and this is good news, significant falls in extreme poverty globally. Uh, in 1990, it was 36%, and as we know, it's now down about 9 or 10%. So that means over a billion people have been lifted out of extreme poverty in the last three decades. But big regional differences, huge poverty reduction in East Asia and Pacific still exists, but in countries like China and Vietnam and Indonesia, rapid growth of 5 6 7% per annum, industrialization and investments in welfare and social programs have made big differences. Strong poverty reduction in uh, India, uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan, but clearly challenges remain within those countries. Rural poverty remains deep in many many areas. Progress is slower in sub-Saharan Africa, and it does remain the region in the world with the highest extreme poverty. As of 2021, nearly 40% of the population lived on less than $2.15 a day. And COVID-19 and the pandemic, both during and after, have really made a, a dent in progress in extreme poverty reduction. But some estimates between 70 and 100 million people have been pushed back into extreme poverty uh, due, to the, due to the impact of the pandemic. The downturn reduced food affordability, and that's clearly had a damaging effect on malnutrition and hunger crises. School closures affected over one and a half billion children, particularly, of course, in countries where digital learning was not available or accessible. And that's going to have a long term consequence for future income inequality. And in the aftermath of the pandemic, we've had rising inflation, we've had external debt crises and latterly geopolitical conflicts, including uh, the Russia-Ukraine war that have slowed down or reversed poverty reduction. High interest rates, for example, in the world following on from high inflation have increased the cost of servicing external debt. And there have been some examples of debt defaults. One aspect I think is worth knowing about for your exams is multidimensional poverty. And that goes beyond just an income based approach and considers multiple deprivations that people can experience in aspects of their life. So it's not just income, it's health, it's education, it's social inclusion. So things like child mortality, whether a child has died in a household, the extent and the depth of mal malnourishment amongst household members, the gap often between expected and mean years of schooling, access to affordable electricity, access to clean drinking water and sanitation facilities. So these are a the much broader, much more holistic aspect that poverty affects many, many different aspects of people's lives, both in developing and advanced countries, of course. Now, according to the Multidimensional Poverty Index, the 2024 report, uh, these were some examples of countries. So in Chad, for example, um, a high MPI score, uh, over four fifths of the population living in poverty on this measure. 
very, very high figures in Niger and South Sudan. India, much lower, but still 16%. Nigeria, nearly half the population living in multidimensional poverty. Whereas in China and Brazil, according to this data, uh, there is a small percentage of population. Ghana, 24%. Inequality is a, is a related concept, particularly when we think about relative poverty. But it refers to the distribution of income or wealth, or both, or opportunities across a population. So even if no one is measured in extreme poverty, which is highly unlikely, a society can still have significant inequality if the, if the distribution of income and wealth is highly concentrated amongst a few individuals. I'm sure you know this, but the common measure, the most widely used measure of income inequality and wealth inequality is the Gini coefficient, with zero if reflecting perfect equality, one or a hundred if you index reflecting extreme inequality. But we also use things like income share ratios. So we compare the share of the total income of the different percentiles. You might look, for example, at the top percent versus the bottom 10%. Or something called the Palmer ratio, which is the income share of the top 40%. Uh, sorry, but my, my bad. The income share of the top 10%, my bad, versus the bottom 40%. And poverty is essentially about deprivation. And I think it's fair to say inequality is about the skewed disparity between rich and poor. These are the countries in the world in 2023 with the highest Gini coefficient that we've converted to an index. So the, the maximum score you can have is 100. Widely regarded that any figure above 40 is very high inequality. And South Africa and Namibia are you know, a long way ahead in terms of the highest income inequality. But there you see countries like Brazil and Zambia, uh, Mozambique uh, and Costa Rica have very high income inequality as measured by the Gini coefficient. So it's important to understand the differences between poverty and inequality. Don't get those terms interchanged. Don't get them wrong. But understand, I think, also that, that they are related cousins as key economic ideas. Thanks for joining in. As always, uh, see you soon.